And that sounds a very kind of mono sound. It's very sort of straight down the middle of the stereo field. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. We're going to duplicate this channel. So I want you to click on where it says, I'm just going to change its name to strings. And we're going to click on that whilst holding down the Alt Option key. And we're going to create a second instance of exactly the same thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pan this hard to the left, we're going to pan this hard to the right, and obviously if we play these at the same time there'll be phase cancellation etc because the two identical parts are playing at the same time. So what I'm going to do, see this little hidden dialogue here, normally when you open up Ableton you don't see anything down this kind of um, right hand side, there's a little D here and what this enables you to do, these values here are basically millis millisecond values and you can change these to offset the sample by either a negative value or a positive value and a positive value will obviously delay by 30 seconds and this a negative value will bring it in um, 30 milliseconds rather uh, before um, the other sample. So that then allows us to avoid that kind of phase um, cancellation and it should create a really nice stereo effect so let's group these together select the two of them we're going to click on control and then go down to group tracks I'm going to rename that strings and let's have a listen to how that sounds And that's a really nice uh, broad effect now. Um, one thing that uh, it's worth pointing out, and this is a little trick actually with um, millisecond delays. If you um, push this so that it's happening later than this part, what will happen is that this part will sound to the ear, it will sound louder than this part and the reason for that is because the ear is being tricked into hearing one sound very fractionally before another and this is a really great um, thing to have in the armory say you have a bass line and you feel that the bass line is not quite elevated enough in the mix but you've got no more headroom or it's already really cranked up super loud a really nice way of just making it feel louder is by just introducing a negative um, millisecond delay and what that will do is it will just bring the bass sample um, very very fractionally ahead of the beat and you probably only need to do that by maybe minus 10 milliseconds or something but it, what it will do is it will trick the brain into thinking that the bass is actually louder than it is because just purely because it's hearing it first so um, I'm kind of happy with the way that sounds for now it's a very dry sound and we'll deal with that in a second um, what I might do here is I might just use this brightness and maybe automate it on each channel so if we click on the brightness you should see um, bright you should see a little kind of um, changeable uh, dialogue here um, if you don't it's because this button up here is pressed and that will show you the um, let me show you something else um, so basically so you have the the uh, the dialogue come up and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to very subtly sweep that up to say round about there and then I'm going to sweep it down to round about here and take it back to zero and then what I'm going to do on this channel is I'm just going to do pretty much the direct opposite so that there's some movement in both of these parts but they're moving in kind of opposite directions and what that should do is it should really amplify the 
stereo effects and create just a little bit of gentle movement in the sound. Let's check it out, see how it sounds. I'm happy with that. It's just created a little bit of movement. You could just hear things as it as they brightened up a little bit. You could just hear them moving slightly over in the kind of stereo field. I'm just going to amplify that effect very slightly. Maybe take that up there. I don't want things to be too kind of too patterned or too obvious. Nice bit of randomness is never a bad thing. So let's just try listening to that. String sound again, but this time we're going to add some of this uh, convolution reverb. Really what we want from these strings is for them to bed down into the mix simply to operate as a texture really that just warms things up that just kind of expands that um, that sort of sense of well-being in a sense that this um, this lovely little melancholy riff is creating so let's just try it without and then we don't want it to be too overpowering when it comes in so I'm gonna cycle this round and then bring the uh, strings in and just see how how that like expands and warms up this um, section of the track <laughs> And what I like about that as well is that this section is now becoming very floaty and very musical, very kind of broad and wide, um, stereo wise. And then as we move back into this basic kind of groove, this more dubby sort of vibe, you still got some width from the pad sounds, uh, from the stab sounds rather, but what's really cool about it is it just kind of sucks back in and just gives you that really sort of solid groove so there's we're basically working on creating a real juxtaposition between these sections <laughs> 